There we go. All set. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're we're now live at the uh, the Maritime Center of Excellence. Slightly afternoon. To, is to tour the building a little bit differently as we're nearing construction. So I'll explain where I'm at in a second, but uh, really just wanted to to first introduce uh, Alan Kruger, the waterfront uh, director here at the Academy, who will be uh, one of the primary inhabitants of this building and a proud member from the class of 88 at the Merchant Marine Academy. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, and some exciting news for Merchant Marine Academy, uh, especially relative to one of our alums, Joanna Noonan, uh, Rear Admiral retired, is going to be the new superintendent. What do you think about that? I think Breaking news here live, great. folks. You're hearing it Breaking here first. News. That's right. She'll be great for the place, and the place will benefit from her greatly, I'm sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, certainly a strong partnership. And as we just uh, just came up a hair short uh, in the Secretary's Cup this weekend, we're looking forward to wrestling that back next year on our turf. But uh, closer to home, uh, where are we today at the Maritime Center of Excellence? It's uh, not something that you've seen in the past, uh, certainly a, a somewhat uh, hidden but important part of, of the Maritime Center. We're actually in the engine room, uh, so to speak. It's where all the mechanical equipment is. Um, and uh, it's really kind of, as you can see behind us, some really some integral, intricate stuff and state of the art. Uh, one thing that went into this building quite a bit was building resiliency from the top up and the bottom down. So we are actually in the highest space of the building up in the attic. Purposely, all this equipment was was uh, designed to be well above our, our floodplains. And as, a, as uh, producer Austin pans around, you can see the myriad of equipment here. Um, as it uh, as it goes uh, quite a ways back into the into the bowels there, um, Alan, I'm sure you can appreciate how important it is for this building to be resilient. We're down on the waterfront; you need to operate on the waterfront. So having uh, a facility that is adaptive and resilient in case of storms is pretty important, right? It's very important, absolutely. So all the mechanicals being up on the top floor, they're protected from the environment, and it's all as you said, state of the art with. Uh, chill water tied into the academy's chill water plant for heating and cooling and we've got uh, capacity for hot water for the radiant floor in the first uh, deck of the boat shops uh, compressed air uh, plenty of compressed air up here with an accumulation storage tank so it is a state-of-the-art facility for sure yeah and that's a great point thanks for for mentioning that um, you know part of the partnership that we've had with the academy um, it, this is, uh, you know, largely an alumni association funded project, but could not have been done without the partnership of the academy and, and rerouting chill water and natural gas from the upper part of the campus down to the lower part of the campus um, helped make this room possible. Um, it really decreased the, the amount of design that went into the mechanical spaces to be able to tap into that existing capacity. So um, cer certainly something that, that can't go unsaid and unseen. Um, so we're going to take a walk down to the boat bay uh, observation area and as we're doing doing that i just charlie uh charlie olson who's a long member here of the academy waterfront i'll put him on the spot charlie how long you been at the academy well close to 20 years so just getting started close yeah. to 20 years um so uh charlie and alan are kind of the heart and soul of, of all the stuff that goes on down at the waterfront and we're going to talk that talk about that a little bit more here in a second so uh, we're going to just kind of walk our way down, meander through um, a lot of still ongoing active construction. So we're going to have to watch our heads as, as we walk down and to, to see some of the things that are still going on. It's hard to believe that it was just about, uh, just about a month ago that we had the commissioning ceremony. And I, I'm really proud of the fact that we were able to get the building in a, in a state to welcome back you know, a couple thousand alums and parents over the and and we're now um, you know every day we're getting closer and closer to completion, um, and which we expect to be able to give the academy the occupancy uh, probably by the uh, the middle to end of December when we'll be mostly wrapped up. Obviously, some punch list items with them. You guys have been here for for a number of years between the two of you, close closing in on 50 years of, of time supporting the academy. What does a facility like this mean to you guys to be able to execute the mission down here on the waterfront? Well, it, so our seasons run from uh, match race championships in San Diego. So we're complete for this year, but we're back in action uh, mid to late February. And our summer program commissioning schedules start in April, early April. So our maintenance season is during the coldest part of the year, the, the winter season here. So 
having the capacity in the building to bring boats indoors to do functional and, and required maintenance work will be the tremendous benefit. So the way that the boat shop is designed is the large overhead door will accommodate uh, our largest vessels, which are the Leadership 44s. We can squeeze two of them in here at a time to do uh, essential maintenance work. And then the, the large floor area will allow us to bring everything from the uh, RHIB fleet to the J70s, to the dinghy fleets, and for winter maintenance. And, um, you know, the radiant flooring in the, in the <coughs> shop floor will provide consistent heat for uh, maintenance operations and good ventilation and air filtering and compressed air and shop tools and we have a carpentry shop and a, me and a mechanic shop as well down there so it's going to improve our capacity tremendously so charlie uh you're you're kind of the day-to-day -day guy executing all the stuff that's going on down down inside the boat bay and beyond um you know kind of what, what are you looking forward to the most well, bob just like al said just an access to be able to work on all this equipment and out of the weather and out of the cold and everything else. We have a lot of stuff to do because, especially in the past couple of years, we haven't been able to do much on the boat. So it's all been outside. We need a lot of, a lot of work to do. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that the L44s are over 10 years old or, you know, going to be over 10 years old. And so, you know, help me out here. You were doing the maintenance outside in the yard for the most part or contracting it out if you had to do inside stuff. So what does that mean is specifically for the L44s? Because that was a significant investment from our alums as well. Well, it's going to, we'll be able to do, what would you call it? Like overall, more of an overhaul type of thing. So we'll be able to have that ability to do that as opposed to being just doing small repair work outside. Um, so we'll be able to take a boat apart and do things and not have to worry about the boat getting wrecked in the winter. So. Yeah, fair, fair to say it kind of as an opportune time as these things are not necessarily midlife but uh appro approaching midlife and in boat years that uh, th this is kind of coming along right at the right time yeah the fleet is uh the first boat was commissioned in may of 2011 so that's uh for oldest boat is 11 years old with the rest of the fleet about 10 years old and you know we, we do some calculations on the number of cadets that go through these vessels so shearwaters had over almost 700 trainees on board over the course of those years. And there's a lot of wear and tear that goes along with that. So we're actually starting this year with starting to do some midlife overhaul and upgrades and um, taking care of stuff because the boats are not new anymore. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're holding up incredibly well. Structurally, they're incredibly robust and durable. But, you know, all the other ancillary auxiliary stuff, the pumps and stoves and toilets and, you know, all of those things, they get uh, a lot of use. And so therefore, we're, we're starting a cycle of replacing um, those things, including uh, the cabin cushions and you name it, yeah. we're doing it. And we're actually doing a full... Uh, complete rig survey for the standing and running rigging on the boats this year. Yeah, so, I mean, just another point on this, and we'll, we'll move on because there's a lot of exciting stuff to see in the building, but the core size is as big as it's been in, you know, recent memory. Yeah. And so having the entire fleet available for the summer training program is, is clearly critical to... to, to yeah, for 2023, yeah. we will be hitting max capacity with the class size and that's pretty much at 100 percent yeah yeah so just a subtle plug for anybody out there that has a 40 uh, uh four foot uh, pl ish uh, vessel that wants to donate to the academy that we can put into the inventory to support uh the coastal sail training program just uh, give me a call um so charlie behind us here uh is uh, probably a slightly better break room than what you guys had in uh in pine hall i would i would uh, venture a guess so you know, part of this building is not just to, you know, improve the capability and capacity, but, you know, there's a hardworking team down here and taking care of the crew was important as well. So I would imagine this will be a great space for the team. No, I think it's going to be fantastic. <clears throat> Room for everybody and you're not eating on your desk and this and that and other thing. It's going to be very nice. Yeah. 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 Place to hold informal meetings and those types of things and just kind of mapping out the year. So a couple other, another nice collaboration area that'll be here, um, right next door, uh, the Collaboration Center. Um, so this will be 
full of systems furniture with uh, desks for for the for the crew that's down here um, for visiting cadet, uh, cadets, faculty, and and so forth. Just a place for folks to come and and work. Um, Alan is you know this is something that that obviously we've been working on quite a bit. So not just the cadets and faculty, but your team as well will have a benefit for you know everything from military training, travel claims, and and whatnot down here, right? That's correct. So. In this room, we'll have four workstations for our, our maintenance personnel that require, you know, a desk and access to computer. And then over here will be three uh, standard workstations that can be logged into for doing all those things. So in the, during the maintenance season, that work is, you know, the routine maintenance work by primarily our staff. Um, but then when you get into the summer programs, you know, all the ONCs to support coastal sail, T-boat folks doing ship handling class, um, you know, the people that are kind of in and out of the waterfront will have a place to put their bag down for a minute. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to keep moving and on. And oh, thing. of so course. One more, the there's always one, one more thing. But oh, wait, there's more. Well, there'll be a conference. There's <laughs> meet with every cadet individually for a debrief. There will be multiple spaces throughout the building to where if it's a, you know, a hot day or a thunderstorm comes rolling through or whatever they need to, they can have these little meeting areas and you'll see them in the building as we go through. The collaboration corners yeah. up in the front. Yeah, yeah definitely. This will be a conference table here. The break room will be tables and chairs. So we'll have multiple places that we never had for cadet engagement. Yeah, awesome. Speaking of places where, uh, you know, just again enhanced areas offices of uh of where alan and his team are going to be so you know it, it, exciting in the fact that there are offices and and you know deserving of the hard work that goes on down here something something certainly long overdue um but but as we've talked about adding capacity and capability stepping into the new 30 person classroom um you know this you can't you can't imagine until you turn around just a little bit as as uh, producer Austin pans out the window. You know this is the view that the cadets are going to have as they're you know sitting through class. Hopefully, there's uh, there's not an attention issue to the instructor uh, on the on the wall here behind uh, behind Austin. But but again, uh, you know, kind of beating that same drum again of of bringing the ability and capability for folks to come down to the waterfront. There really hasn't been a facility to do that. Um, so we, we've been talking about kind of the, the back of the house where it's important to, to take care of you and your team for what you're doing, but really as a mechanism to bring the academy community down to here. Can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So this kind of, we enter into like what we call the public space, right? Where during all the numerous uh, events that occur over the course of the year, starting with you know day one all the way through commencement and then through the summer training periods, there'll be a lot of activity in these spaces. So during the academic year, this classroom will be available for, um, for instructors, professors to be able to bring their and hold a class down here. Um, it'll be a great space for clubs and teams to be able to meet. Um, and then the welcome center area out here, the gathering space will be uh, primarily, you know, 12 months a year. It'll be very useful, whether it's indoors or in the summer with the doors that open up out on the decks. I can imagine this place will be, uh, will be booked routinely. Yeah, that, that's certainly the plan. And we're going we're gonna to just uh, carefully navigate our way into the welcome center. I'm sure we're probably slightly getting in the way. Um, as we talked about, this this remains a very active uh, construction construction site, but but really nearing completion as we're we're kind of getting to the finer finer finishes. Um, so yeah, Alan, you, you serve as the the maritime front door for the academy. Um, as uh, as uh, Mr. Randy Hogan, our our campaign chair, has has uh, coined that term for us. Um, this is really what we want to do to to welcome not just the community here at the academy, um, all kinds of recruiting front. Um, and then certainly different uh, conferences and seminars and, and those types of things. But, but we spent a great deal of time, uh, you know, uh, between uh, our, our campaign committee working with Dr. Tyler, Randy, yourself, um, and, and others, Doug Wisniewski, to get the feel of, you're, you're much saltier than me, so I'm just gonna maybe just kinda, you know, what, what do you feel when you walk into this space? Yeah, I think it's got, you know, when we, when we allowed uh, Smith Group and Greg Mellet to kind of, we took the, the cuffs off and said, all right, go ahead and dream a little bit. Um, this is what they came up with. And so he did a lot of work and 
kind of inspiring the the connection to the maritime and so the the form of the roof and the inside of the building with the with the what we might call ship frames or ribs and you know a center keel beam um you know it's it's all structural but that structure reveals the beauty in these glue lamps and then this sound deadening ceiling planking and we'll we'll take a walk out to the deck because you just feel a such a an amazing strong connection from being down on the on the ground uh, up to the deck it's just it's just immediate when you come outside um you know one of the things that's connected as we come down the home stretch um but i'm just gonna wander into here alan if you if you don't mind joining me is um austin kind of special into this building to do exactly what you had talked about to create a an area for the cadets the 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 uh safety observers and how important is the coastal sail training program to the cadet development um you you've had a you've had a daughter graduate from here and you've you've been running this program for a number of years so it's it's hard to overstate it right i mean i i believe that our superintendent admiral kelly says it's you know, 2013 was the first year of using 100% of the new leader through the summer. A couple hiccups with COVID, but, um, you know, he states quite clearly that it's it's one of our most effective programs that teaching the basics of sailing, seamanship, navigation in an appropriate uh, domain, you know, maritime domain uh, venue and um, in a unique opportunity for officers in a r ratio of six to seven cadets, one to six to seven is very unique experience at that pivotal, the cadre uh, experience, the cadet mid-grade transition course, coastal sail, you know, those programs are all tied together, I mean, I would say full speed, all the core programs have been developed and there's systematic approaches that repeat themselves throughout from starting at Swab Summer all the way to the first class division officer experience. So it, it ties in very nicely. And um, for the cadets, it's a very enjoyable program because they're, they're yeah. able to get out on the water. It's what they hopefully came yeah. to the academy to do and, and then go see uh, Southern New England from here out to the Cape and Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Block Island, but underway, you know, underway sailing, feeling the, you know, the, the wind in your hair and the, the salt in your face, um, being pushed uh, to, to push yourself, to challenge yourself, to, to succeed and fail. You know, there's lots of failure that goes along with that process, but it's, it's um, complemented, it's, it's uh, bolstered by direct immediate feedback by shipmates and their officers, so it's a tremendously successful program. Yeah, and, and one of the elements of, of just kind of capturing all of that, you know, you talked about the Institute for Leadership developing the leader, leader development program, um, of, you know, a leadership connection to what goes on. And, and this, this area here will, will serve that in, in a physical manner. Um, you know, that you can see a TV behind us here. The class of 65 is, is actively engaged, and we'll send out a link with this as well. Um, you know, to capture leadership uh, stories and and what that development was like either as a cadet or a coastal sail training program being central to that. And that's not just ourselves telling us it's a great program. It's meaningful and it's relevant and it's enjoyable. So I think you hit three uh, and, and really aim to provide a lot of value to these programs, whether it's coastal sail or the activities that go on on the T-boats. Um, I think what we'll see is there'll be more activity by more cadets, the whole Corps, uh, being able to utilize this facility to get down to the waterfront and not just in the summer program period. I, I imagine that these collaboration spaces will be great for goal team meetings where, you know, cadets are meeting at different times of the year during evaluation periods. You know, that's what we envision here is that we bring the campus more down to the waterfront. Yeah, and we're not even talking about, and we'll do a follow-on program of what's going to happen downstairs in, in the Science and Engineering Innovation Lab and how that kind of fits into all this. Um, there's really much more than we could fit in a 30-minute in a period, um, but it's, you know, central to this was inspiring a liking for the sea and the lore. Um, serving as the maritime front door of the academy and 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 hopefully uh, you know we've kind of communicated that and so I think we're going to just end in our last couple minutes we're just going to take a walk out onto the onto the deck here to just further experience what what that connection is to the waterfront we're just going to watch our step here coming down 
but it is amazing to me as soon as you're as soon as you walk out here you know you're you're seeing you know the waterfront um all the amazing assets all the amazing activity that goes on down here so so i'll i'll, I'll wrestle charlie back over here charlie there's there's a lot of stuff that's that happens down here on a day in and day out basis um you've been uh, an important part of this project as we've been kind of pulling it together just you know as you look out on the waterfront you know what what's what's the the major impacts that you see from the building just kind of ending where we began when we first start started talking it just makes the whole area more usable bob we have more space down here on the waterfront so we have cranes with hauling boats every, almost not every day but weekly doing repair work you know uh, fixing outboards, all the ribs we have. We have, well, you know, over 100 and what, close to 150 boats here to take care of. So it's a lot of action going on down here. And, and not a big team. So how many, you know, the, the waterfront team is, is a dozen plus, right? Yeah, our maintenance staff is about 12 people. Yeah, so having a facility to be as efficient as possible, I presume, is a, is a good thing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So and it's, it's kind of the last piece here, you know, just to remind everyone, you know, as you look around, you see there's... Uh, Eagle Pier was replaced, and the Jacob Truck Causeway, the old Timber Causeway, was replaced. The whole bulkhead's been uh, replaced with the Superstorm Sandy supplemental funding that we got. Our floating docks are in pretty, pretty decent shape. So Pine Hall was that last thing to really take care of down at the waterfront. And there will be new things. You know, it's not too early to start to think about with this great coastal sail training program. Well, those boats will have a, a lifespan that we need to yeah. be thinking about yeah. when we're going to replace them. Um, but it really will tie this whole thing together where, you know, it's going to be a functional place where from an operational kind of uh, support perspective, we'll be able to do our job better than we ever have been. And then from the operational side with the, the training programs that go down, on down here, out of the, out of the weather, uh, meeting spaces, um, and I, you know, I like to say that I think the MCOB, MCOE will be integral from, from AIM yeah. through the cadet experience all the way to service our, our alums yeah. out there. So it's, I see it as being um, a great addition to the Coast Guard Academy. Yeah, yeah well said. And, and just kind of, you know, kind of as, as we were panning around and you were talking about the different projects, it's just amazing as we were reflecting back to the commissioning, uh, you pointed to where Eagle used to be, where now Coho Pier is, all the work that you've done along the sheet piling, all the way out to the new causeway of J 